The Toyota Alphard and Velfire are two of Toyota's most prestigious multi-purpose vehicles. These cars have been around since 2002, with the Alphard being the most, or aimed at being the most prestigious of the two. For example, both vehicles share the same platform and are identical in features. The minor differences are, one, if you look at the front of the Alphard and Velfire, you will notice that the lights are different. The Alphard has two complete headlamps with the park lamps and direction embedded while the Velfire has split headlamps with the high beam finished in halogen and low beams in xenon, the turning lights located beside the high beam and park lights beside the low beam, both wheels are also different. 2. Looking at the Alphard, I am literally listening for this sound. The grill looks like Optimus Prime and is ready to turn into a truck and bears a different insignia, while the Velfire's grill has a more mild and sedative look and bears the Toyota's new insignia. The rear lights are also different, while the shape remains the same. The Alphard's tail lights are finished in conventional red reflectors, while those of the Velfire are finished in crystal white. It is very important to note at this time that both vehicles, the Alphard and Velfire, are adult siblings to the Noah and Voxy, respectively, if you look closely at the front designs. Let us take a closer look. The Alphard and the Noah has that front design of each other, with the Noah bearing its own insignia, N, and the Alphard as its own. Now, here's the kicker. The Velfire, being the so-called knockoff version of the Alphard, gets the Toyota insignia instead of an F or something else. Then look at the Voxy, which is also said to be the knockoff to the Noah, also keeps the Toyota sign instead of getting a V are one of its own. Right now it look like Toyota does have a way for just make vehicle, make two of the same vehicle and just hype up one over the other. You know, just give them two different names and hype them up. You look one Wyndham and you look one prominent, you don't see that. Let us now take a look on this Velfire. This car measures 4,850mm in length with a wheelbase of 2,950mm, 1,830mm wide and a height of 1,890mm. It sits on four 18-inch aluminum rims finished in black bearing the name Velfire in the upcap and are mounted to a McPherson suspension system at the front and a torsion beam at the rear. This car is front-wheel drive. The brake arrangement is that it has ventilated anti-locking disc brakes at the front and anti-locking disc brakes at the back. It is important to note that even though all wheels are disc, the part brake uses drums. I guess that is Toyota's strange way of doing things. Under the bonnet of this car is a 2.4-litre four-cylinder inline engine with a torque of 224 Newton meters and can rev up to 4,000 RPM and pushes 168 horsepower and this engine is bolted to a 7-speed constant variable transmission, same thing as we refer to as CVT. Let us look at some of the key features. Hey, wanna hear me now? I don't want to go driving at the bus lane during bus hours. With this vehicle here and believe say when I drive a bus, you know. When I hear me refer to it as car, it's a car. And I want bus. So when you drive upon the road, you know allow the bus lane here, sir. Good. No pun intended here, but the key features are that this car has a keyless entry on either side of the two front doors where you can place your hands behind the handle or press the button located on the handle for entry. The side doors on both sides are semi-automatic with fully automatic powered windows. To gain entry through the side doors, you can pull on the handle once, press the remote, or the driver can press the button located in front of the moon roof. On the remote, you can also operate the fully automatic powered windows. The front and side doors are equipped with rain visors bearing the name of the car, Velfire. The car has a full custom body kit 
with embedded parking sensors and cameras. The rearview mirrors also contain turning lamps for styles and enhanced driving signals. With the trunk contains an integrated spoiler at the top with a brake light finish in crystal white under which is a wiper and a nipple for windscreen cleaning, a factory tinting glass, the Toyota sign, a silver metal finishing strip, two long reverse lights, some of the other lights, and the vehicle's name Velfire on the lower left hand side. If this was the 3.5 model, you would have seen the V6 on the right hand side in line with the vehicle's name Velfire. On the rear bumper, there are two red reflectors and the embedded parking sensors. At the top of the vehicle, there is an automatic sunroof for the passengers and a moonroof for the driver and front passengers. Let us take a tour inside. In the driver's compartment, in front of the driver is a very huge windscreen, a dashboard with plastic and polished board finishing, wind glass, wind glass, a multi-purpose steering wheel with cruise capabilities, and buttons on one side to control the radio, and an analog dashboard with adjustable brightness. The driver door is typical, with mirror and windows, control buttons, and a cup or bottle holder. There are some buttons to the lower right of the steering wheel that can control the dash light, trip, room light, parking sensors, and dummy switches for additional features. It is very important to note at this time that this model is the very lowest tier of the Velfire lineup, hence all the features are not available. For example, in the i-end model, this compartment is an actual cooler for drinks, but in this model, it is just a storage area. The front seats in higher end wheel fires are button operated for reclining and leg support while this is manually reclined and has no leg support. Both advisors are equipped with mirrors and lights to facilitate women putting on their cement on their faces. Both the driver and front passengers have hand support. Both the driver and passenger at the front have access to a manual moonroof with the, slide, with the side door control buttons placed in front. Two bright roof lights a compartment for your sunglasses, a digital inside rear view mirror with remote control, a 10 inch screen radio with multi capabilities such as Bluetooth and internet. Below are the front and rear semi digital temperature control panel, a 12 volt cigarette lighter socket with a dump space for an additional wall socket, five storage compartments, and a foldable cup holder for two cups, and a flat surface for resting items such as phones, tablets, etc. In the passenger compartment, there is a sunroof, a DVD screen with remote, the rear temperature control panel, two generally bright lights, four individual lights, and two sports or club setting lights that can be adjusted and changed colors depending on the model. There are two rows of seats capable of carrying up to six passengers seated very comfortably. It is also important to note that this is the eight-seater model and therefore luxury is sacrificed for an extra passenger. For example, the seven-seater model has a walk-in space between the second row of chairs. Each chair has its own cup holder, temperature control, foot support, and can do 360 for office settings. You do not get those here. In the eight-seater, you can sacrifice a passenger for the cup holders, notwithstanding each side door has a cup holder. The floor has nice carpets and the channel for the sliding seats. Our channel. You know, if you have no concern, nor no scaring you about you not getting no parts in a Jamaica, Toyota this name. You can't just walk in a KFC and order one two piece. And we can guarantee you, say, you'll get one shocks for one piece of chicken. And if you order one three piece, you'll get two piece of chicken and a control arm. Some of my main dislikes. One, the price. Yo, the vehicle is too expensive, brother. Too expensive. But anyway, it can go on still. But the suspension system, you know, more on top of Hey, Toyota, how are this? How is such a huge car? Wanna put back first the suspension on the front. Where wanna get that from? And for Markex and Honda card, we only make the car five smuddy. Them car they have upper control arm. So how do do that? A foolishness this man. But here we go. On. 
I'm not going to knock so much because you know, you're talking from an automotive technician's perspective. I kind of smile still. But from, a, but from an owner's perspective, I'm a gross brother. A better suspension system should have on the front of so. And for a car, what do you make for luxury? The engine too noisy, sound like it out for mash up. You see me, I say. So that is our next problem. Our next concern. The next thing, that post here with that dashboard there, yes, sir. Over that side, the dashboard big and the post there, so. It don't make it for country road, for country driving. The vision poor. So if you look, all right, so see me a driver, so now. This is Mount Rasa, me go up. So, you find, say, when you take a right hand corner and you look across there, so. If you notice the car, they will come. It comes like the post is kind of black out with vision in a certain way. I have to kind of do some, I have to work some magic and I use some judgment. But I guess over time it takes some getting used to and some work around and them things. But the post is that issue. You see what I say? Alright. Anyway, overall, it's a very nice vehicle, especially if you're only driving built up areas you know urban areas and on highways but i don't believe it is suitable for driving on country road you know them whiny whiny road they like Montreal. So let me show you you know driver i feel just be very careful anyway if you don't like this video and like what go on just do the right thing <laughs> yeah man like it comment pan it Subscribe and share it. Peace out.